two types of people worth mentioning. The successful, thriving, prolific, inspiring artist and the successful, thriving, generous art lover that appreciates art artists and is happy to exchange energies fairly. While I admire them both and strive to be the former, I so appreciate the art lover, the dreamer. Thank you, Seamus from Lancaster, for making this project a reality. Some moments are worth remembering and immortalizing into a full wall mural. This was such a moment captured in a photo taken on the Amazon basin one magical morning. It turned out to be quite a mystical day. And why not wake up each morning of your life in a dream vacation to make every single day a special one? The one. One day at a time. That's what I like most about painting murals. It's such a bold statement, an enveloping experience, grand and immersive. Perhaps more than just a framed painting on a wall, the mural transports you to a place, a distant memory, a feeling what I like to call a sanctuary of the soul. The magnificent size of this kind of art is so attractive to me. Maybe it's another one of those short girl complexes. I started painting wall. Hey. I started painting on walls shortly after we bought our house in 2012. In the beginning, the paintings were simple, tentative, amateurish. It was more of a decorative touch than an actual mural. Distant doodles of my playful youth. And since well-meaning people, as they often do, thought that I was having way too much selfish fun, suggested that I offer custom mural painting services to other people and finally be of some service in the world. So one day I brought home a library book about painting murals and I was tremendously humbled by the level of skill and creativity and boldness that I saw in that book. I was scared, I was challenged, I was inspired. So I started painting entire rooms in my house one by one each room a different world. First, we woke up in Pepperland to my husband's request. Then our daughter requested a rainforest in her bedroom. But then is Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, and our bathroom, a crystal cave, and so on. I wasn't making any videos at the time, so I can't show you the process. I was learning too. This two and a half year period was my learning curve, my apprenticeship. Someone asked me who were my biggest influences in painting. There were a few muralists that I learned a couple tricks and tips from, but one that deserves the most mention here is Mural Joe. He's a great teacher, honest person, and a self-taught artist. Check him out, I left a link down below. I was devouring books and anything that I could learn from. When I was out of rooms at home, I felt like I was almost ready to go out into the world and as you Americans say, bring home the cheese. Almost ready, because when are we ever truly ready to step into the unknown? It was scary. So many questions like, 
will they be watching and trying to make conversation the whole time? Or what if the person is a psychopath or worse, doesn't pay? My husband and I made a website and I started spreading the word on social media and similar. At first, it was quiet. I did some projects for my family and they were fun. I got a couple of part-time jobs just until my mural business starts going. They weren't horrible. I worked with handmade artisanal objects in one and I was a game master for an escape room in the other. Then I got my first client. It was a sports mural with a person in it. I had never painted or drawn people before. Again, this was a memorable moment in football history, and he, he wanted it immortalized onto his game room in his basement. Since I had never painted or drawn people before, I used the grid method that helped me to get all the proportions correctly onto the wall and made everything flow very easily. I felt so accomplished. I also got paid for the first time. I was painting on canvases in my in-between murals time. Funnily, that's when I started to feel like a real artist with an easel like canvas and acrylic paints. <laughs> and then I had some mural projects in between and even for the escape room employers, I painted in one of their rooms and got paid for it. It took a while to learn all the ins and outs of the biz, which is not as intuitive as painting, mind you. How to make proper contracts, how to talk to clients, how to price the murals, how to get a deposit before starting on sketches. I also found out that people wanted to learn how to paint. I mean, it was obvious. People would praise my work and my talents. It was getting so tiresome hearing them declare how talentless and how inept they are. That is so beautiful. You are so talented. I could never do something like that. Well, now with that attitude. Then, in the fall of 2019, I tried acrylic pouring. It was so mesmerizing, the patterns of flow and how effortless it is to create a piece of art. One month in, I decided I was ready to teach, to show people how easy it is and anyone can do it and be creative. The fluid art workshops are all about having fun, going with the flow, and creating a piece of abstract art that could be the springboard, the gateway technique that propels you into the creative mentality. 
We had fun at our workshops, so much fun that we still have a bi-weekly class at my studio. Well, my friend's studio. With this additional stream of income, I soon quit both jobs and could focus 100% on my business, Mural Dreams. Nowadays, with the world condition, the classes are small, but there's still a small group of friends and we do our best to keep it regular. A couple months ago in November, I decided that it was time for me to start teaching acrylic painting classes at the studio, getting out of my comfort zone again, and taking another leap towards self-growth and inspiring a small community around me, because I'm learning along as much as I teach others. It's all about that exchange of energy. And now I finished this mural, and I've heard people say that it's my best one yet. Being a muralist and being a self-employed artist requires wearing many hats, being flexible and adaptable. The pros of being independent is that you get to set your own schedule, fees, and in that respect, there's a lot of flexibility and freedom. Also, you're the boss. You make the rules. And being your boss is interesting. It's a gift. It's a gift <laughs> and a curse. It isn't just following orders. It's knowing what orders to give and seeing yourself as a boss. There must be a great discipline and the willingness to adapt and learn new tricks in order to stay relevant, to get the word out, and hustle to get jobs. I know all artists are different and have different circumstances and ways of living. And there's no right or wrong way of doing it. But the trick is to find out what you really want to do with your life, and that changes frequently. As we set new goals and we're always reaching for our newest and shiniest dreams. One of my favorite things about being a muralist in particular is the quiet time painting. There is serenity in being in someone else's house, undisturbed, most definitely without them watching and in the decent bathroom. Making new connections with people and bringing their dreams to life is such a fulfilling part. The feeling of being needed and appreciated, mmm, delicious. Another thing I love about mural jobs is the travel part. I know normal people drive to work, but when I'm an artist at home, there could be days when I don't even leave my house. I get cocooned. It's the most wonderful thing. But then I remember how much I love driving. It's like meditation. When I don't have to be everything else. But probably the most exciting part of being a muralist is the creative experience, the ability to bring something new into this material world. world. The feeling of before and after, the transformation, the sharing of awe, the inspirations, but ultimately, the anticipation of that moment when I will be basking in the adulation of my numerous companions. <laughs> 